Hi, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for your time. My name is Phil Zawani. I'm going to introduce a new product today, but I'd like to share a story with you which I think you might find interesting. My background is open source. 18 years ago, a US software company came up with an idea to work with a large device manufacturer in Europe to build a new platform where they combine open source with devices. Now the company was Red Hat, the software company. The device manufacturer was Nokia. And what we built was a platform to showcase how open source can be used with existing technology to transform a new business. Now Nokia went a different way, they went a different direction, but that technology was made open source. It was picked up six months later by a company called Google, and it's what you all know as Android. So those kind of developers now have moved onto a different architecture, it's called blockchain. So what I'd like to do is introduce Ergo Lite. So first, Ergo. Ergo is a platform built by a crack team of developers in Korea. It's probably the largest blockchain development team in the world outside of IBM. These guys have been quietly doing POCs. Yes, we do POCs, because a customer will not adopt a technology before they do a POC. But we've moved from POCs to production. This team has built the most production-ready systems in the world for banks, governments, healthcare, automotive manufacturers. We have 35 million enterprise users using this technology. Why is that relevant today? If, you, if you've heard of blockchain, there's two schools of thoughts of blockchain, private blockchains and public blockchains. The truth is you need both if you want to build a business application. So Ergo is a platform, it's the first world platform that combines a private blockchain and a public blockchain with cloud computing, all packaged together to make it very, very easy to develop on blockchain. This was announced last week in Korea. It's been in production for five years. It's now available worldwide. The reason that's relevant is it allows companies to use blockchain, private, public, cloud computing, software development to create new ecosystems. And one of those ecosystems is IoT. IoT devices, the biggest problem with IoT devices is that they're not built to be intelligent. They don't have enough memory, enough horsepower, they're dumb devices. And the problem with connecting IoT devices is security here. The surface attack area is too big. There is nothing like a domain name service for IoT devices to authenticate and register devices. That's why you don't see mission critical IoT systems yet in production. But there's no way to secure them really without spending a lot of time and money. The reason being is that the IoT environment is very complex. The topology is a mixture of technology, new and old, people, it can be hacked. It's complex, it's diverse. Also, the environment they operate in is non-constant. Wi-Fi doesn't exist everywhere. IoT devices need to communicate. If you lose connection, sometimes the device doesn't know what to do. Also, people are trying to use cloud computing to connect IoT for business. The problem with that, every transaction has to go from the device up into the cloud, ask a question, authenticate, and comes back. It takes time, takes money, it's too complex. So we're really trying to retrofit new technology to old technology, it's not really working. So what you may not know is that every one of you has been carrying around a piece of software for 20 years that is the most commonly used product in the world. It's called SQLite. It's a database. If you have a mobile phone, a Fitbit, a washing machine with a screen, you will be using this technology. SQLite is a database. It's a simple database that allows you to store files locally. So everybody uses this. Apple, Google, Facebook, Bosch, it's everywhere. But you don't know this. But again, it's been used as a dumb database. Because unlike other databases, it doesn't communicate with an architecture. It's built to be simple and easy to use. But there are over a trillion devices out there. Now, a lot of companies try and promote new technology to throw away all your old stuff and buy new stuff. But there's another way, Ergolite. Ergolite is a variation of this hybrid blockchain built for SQL, for SQLite. What it allows you to do, we could, within two or three weeks, launch 1,000 applications on our platform if we work with developers. Because what Ergolite is, is a simple twist on the technology. We've taken old technology SQLite, modified the library, so anybody who has an Ergo, has a SQLite application, within 10 minutes, can make it blockchain ready. Now what does that mean? It means you can connect all these devices into blockchains to do different things. Now why is that useful? Well firstly, 
today you cannot authenticate IoT devices. I said before, you need a cloud infrastructure. It's not built to be secure. But if you can push all of cloud technology, all of what you know as secure infrastructures into the devices, you can actually solve a really, really big problem of how to reuse these devices. So Ergo Light is pushing technology from the cloud into the devices, but distributing it across the network. So suddenly, SQL Light devices can connect to a blockchain. That potentially, in simple words, is this. On the right is a client-server architecture. Most of the world operates that way. You connect to servers. It could be cloud, it could be your private data centers. But with a distributed architecture, like blockchain, you suddenly push everything out. So the real value of blockchain or distributed ledgers, not Bitcoin, it's not banking, it's about pushing data around the world, data everywhere, even with companies you can't trust. That's why blockchain is so exciting. But now we're combining blockchain with IoT. So with SQL and Ergo Light, anybody who has IoT devices that are there doing a job, you could reprovision, repurpose those devices and come up with new use cases very easily. And this is all free. It's all open source software. You do not get charged for any of this, like Linux. Our approach is like Linux. I worked in Red Hat 20 years ago is to give the technology out and let people experiment and find use cases. And that's how you get mass adoption. So we're doing the same thing with Ergo Light. So this is a complex slide, but in effect, you change one line of code with your setup and point to a new library, and suddenly your SQL application is ready to be used on any form of blockchain within 10 minutes. You don't believe us? Come to our stand, we'll show you this working. So fundamentally, what we want to do is give companies who have lots of IoT devices the chance to reuse the devices and reconfigure them in new use cases. For example, smart factories. In a smart factory, a robot, if it loses connection with the server, stops. And a human has to go and inspect and press a button to restart this, just in case something goes wrong, it goes haywire. With IoT connected to a permanent database, you can let these devices run live because with SQLite and Ergolite, even if you lose connectivity, it can still write to the database. It doesn't need a persistent communication. It doesn't need Wi-Fi. When Wi-Fi becomes available, it resyncs. So it's a clever piece of technology to allow things to run remote, connected, and if the network drops off, it can continue to work and then it resyncs without any collisions. That has not been done before. Another example is Smart Grid. The reason we don't use smart meters in our homes today is they're too complicated. They're expensive, they're complicated here, but you can suddenly use street lighting, parking sensors, and reconfigure them with a blockchain to come up with new use cases. So now governments are looking at IoT with blockchain in areas like smart grid. And last but not least is autonomous vehicles. This is where people like Bosch, people like Daimler, BMW are experimenting now with connecting IoT devices, cars, with a blockchain because this is mission critical. You've all heard of people hacking cars, taking control of a Tesla. With a blockchain, you could stop that. You could prevent that. With a blockchain, you could almost make it impossible for people to hack the network. So blockchain provides a backplane for you to plug in smart devices like cars and stop people hacking the network. That has not been done before. The only way you can do this today is to spend a lot of money with an OEM or a vendor and buy lots of mainframes or lots of servers and control the devices. It's too expensive. With blockchain, you could potentially do this within a few weeks. So this is what's really, really cool about this technology here. So we've just launched this. If you'd like to come and see us on the stand, we're over here, 317. We're going to upload the code soon so you can download this. As I said, it's built by a team of crack developers in Korea, but we just launched our team in London and in Berlin, we're hiring. We're hiring business development people, software developers here. You'll hear more about us hopefully in the years to come. So with that, I'd like to end and maybe take a few questions. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. So just very quickly, you mentioned the software is free, software is open source. What are the computing and storage requirements on a device? You know, is this the, the sort of thing that can go into an existing washing machine? Yes. Or are you needing yes. more than that? Any device does not need any, you're not, you're not, you're replacing software with smaller pieces of code, you're not adding. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? 
The top question wins an award. How about that? <laughs> Microphone is on the way. Thank you. Martin Kuba from Kuba. So you mentioned the resyncing of the databases is something that you think is a, a new approach. Yes. So how, how do you compare and, 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 and distinguish to Couchbase? Yeah, so the simpler way, because to make it very simple for the audience, each device runs its own version of the software, and it has its own local file system. That file system syncs with a blockchain, but if the connection is lost, it can still write to its own data set. And then when the connection is reestablished, we've built some cool software which resyncs so there's no collisions. It's called forking and merging. That hasn't been done before. It's a very simple architecture. It's like a bridge. So the idea is that the devices can continue to operate right locally, and once the connection is established, it reconnects. This has been built for blockchain before, because in blockchain you have this problem called the double spend problem. The double spend problem is the same thing with IoT devices that are offline. We've modified the double spend problem to make it very simple for IoT devices to work. I'm not the technical engineer who's going to explain in details. We have a team here and on the stand. Very happy to go into more detail if you want. Hi, this is Ajay. Hi. Uh, this is regarding some plant, manufacturing plant. So we have some devices, uh, which is like legacy kind of thing. It's very difficult that they can communicate. So the Argo like how it can help us. Also, uh, there are some mobile app application where they are coming that I have uh, some kind of sensitive data. And how can we, can we leverage the Argo like in that case? Yeah, there's two questions. One is, how can we leverage it today with existing applications? And second is, how does it work with with sensitive data. Let me handle the first one. If you have an IoT device and it runs SQL, you could modify your SQL code and suddenly your device can connect to a blockchain and then you can do many things with it like secure the devices. It's that simple. Now the issue of the second one, data privacy, is to do with where you store your data. Most people think data lives on the blockchain. You can put data on the blockchain, but what lives on the blockchain is the, the hash, the value of the transaction. So we've built a distributed file system using a, ver a version of IPFS, which is an enterprise-grade platform to allow you to distribute data in a secure network, either in the cloud or on your private network. So in a mission-critical environment where your data needs to be stored locally or distributed, we have a system for that, which is Ergo. It's the enterprise version. So Ergo is the enterprise platform. Ergo Lite is the device platform. One more question? Uh, we're, we are actually out of time, I'm afraid. You can let, him, let, let him ask his last question, If please, it's a yeah. quick one. Wait. It looks like a good question. I'll try and keep it quick. Uh, how, do you, how well protected are you against pollution attacks? Against pollution? Oh, what do you mean by pollution? So in a network, I somehow managed to take control of around half of the nodes, or at least a significant number. Yeah, so in blockchain, the way you can hack a blockchain network is if you control over 50% of the nodes that do the blocks. Well, in our environment, the blocks are controlled by telecom, telecoms companies around the world. These are not kids in China buying staking tokens. We have enterprise companies running these nodes. So unless all these telcos collude to break the system, there is almost no way you're going to break the system. That's the difference between our architecture. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Phil.